everyone, my name is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing a 24 hour readathon of nonfiction books. <laughs> it's Brittany, bitch. I don't think I've read any nonfiction at all in 2021, and I'm going to rectify that before the end of the year. And also, I really just need to get a few more books in my repertoire for the end of the year because I changed my Goodreads challenge. And now I'm like six books behind. So I really need to catch the fuck up. So I had to wait for the nail salon to open at 9 a.m. this morning. And now it is 10 10. And now the library is open because I need to go get one of the books for this reading vlog. And it just came in along with another one. So I'm going to go pick those up and return to other books. And then I'm going to go get a smoothie bowl. And then I'm going to get a little bit into reading and tell you more about the books I plan on reading for this. Rudolph, how you do that? I'm not sure if anybody else is like this, but when I get my smoothie bowls, you only can have like three free toppings. So when I come home, I kind of go crazy with my toppings. Like I really love coconut. And then I also really love some chia seeds. And I also really love this toasted coconut granola. I'm just gonna slather this on here. We're gonna beef it up a little bit. Some chia seeds. I think that actual chia seeds, like, you know, like an overnight oats or whatever, are fucking disgusting. My favorite definitely has to be, like, the coconut. I really don't know why, but this is unsweetened coconut, and it is just amazing. Probably gonna put some more on when I'm, like, halfway through. So, I don't know if anybody else likes to zhuzh up their smoothie bowls. But also, I got this disgusting wheatgrass on, and it's gonna be really gross. <laughs> also, if you couldn't see, this is one of the books I'm going to be trying to read today. Hope in the Dark. Untold Histories, Wild Possibilities by Rebecca Solnit. And this is basically kind of a book about activism and how activism actually changed the world. And I hope that one's a really good read as well. So that is the first book. And I'll talk about the second book a little bit later. next day and I decided that since I technically started my books at noon yesterday I'm gonna give myself till noon today to finish those books so the first one and the one that I've read the most of is a book called by the hidden culture history and science of bisexuality by Julia Shaw and I found this book on NetGalley and I immediately requested it barely knew anything about it um, and I really love that this is so scientific and it basically uses science to explain bisexuality let me read you part of her introduction just so you can kind of see what the book is about and there's a lot of really great parts in here but I just want to read a part of the introduction for the moment. She says I am bisexual and I have long felt myself wanting more. I have yearned to tether myself to a solid foundation of history and research to find bi representation in politics and pop culture and to generally answer the question where are all the bisexual people? When I began my search I found a crushing void and wondered whether my quest for more was a waste of time. Then I began to familiarize myself with the language of queer scholarship and slowly the world of bisexual research revealed itself to me. I came to realize that there is incredible work that has been done but that tragically almost all of it remains concealed from the public. With this book I want to change that to bring colorful world of bisexual scholarship out of the shadows. I also want people to stop treating bi identities and bi lives as a perversion. To do that we don't just need to better understand bisexuality we, we also need to call heterosexuality into question. Bisexuality isn't mysterious threatening or performative or even cool woke or transcendental. It is a normal part of human sexuality. Even in the 21st century, most of us assume that people are straight until proven otherwise. We center heterosexuality as a son of our sexual solar system, blinding our exploration of other sexualities. I don't think that everybody is bi as is so often half-jokingly stated by people. Rather, I believe it is time to queer our worldview by destabilizing our assumptions about sex and sexuality. So that is just a taste of her introduction. I think it's incredibly well written so far. I'm like 60% of the way into this. So I'm going to try and finish this up in the next couple of hours, but I'm, I'm really impressed impressed that she can perfectly meld in like some social scenes and then you know talk about like Lady Gaga or whatever like you know mention certain people and make it modern but she uses studies and history examples from even the 1800s of you know like queer couples and it's just really interesting that she also brings in the science aspect which is why I think I'm really enjoying it. I love 
when books center around scientific facts. She brings up like the Kinsey scale and fine grid. It's really, it's really impressive. And I, I think everybody should read it at this point. I, I have nothing wrong with this book so far. Um, so I'm gonna try and finish this and then I'm trying to give you guys some updates. But I'm gonna try and finish by first and then I'm gonna get into this because I tried reading a little bit of it, but it's definitely a little more like wordy and not as interesting to me as by. So I'll talk to you when I talk to you. Okay, I finished both of the books, so let me start with Bai first. And Bai was a five-star read. I really enjoyed this. It, it perfectly blended the lines between science as well as anecdotes, and it really just made a lot of sense. I think a lot of people could think it's a little bit dry, but for me, I prefer the science-based stuff. I think this book is great for absolutely everyone of every age, but I especially think it's really important for those of us who are questioning our sexuality. And I think that this book answers a lot of those questions or at least helps you realize that those questions are normal. So this book isn't coming out till next year. I'm going to say this one's definitely going to be on the Goodreads Choice Awards for next year because it is fantastic. I think it's going to be an excellent LGBTQIA plus resource. I don't remember really anything about it, but there's so much good stuff in there. There's so many amazing quotes and so many things I highlighted that I just live and breathe and it just makes me feel so much more validated in myself. And it's also so nice to see someone actually explore all the things that we know have been hidden from us for so long to finally explore those things and try to understand them. Amazing. Five out of five stars would 100% recommend. But I ended up DNFing Hope in the Dark and here's why. This has so many things going for it, but the execution was not great. The text was so jumbled and muddled that all of her own thoughts were like subsequently ruined by her next thought. It was just very, not poorly written, but written in a way that is just very hard to understand. This was overly confusing and profound to the point where like, I didn't understand when I was reading half the time and I'd have to go back to like see what country we were talking about or what revolution we were talking about because it was so jumbled. It's honestly kind of a mess. She also constantly uses asterisks and parentheses to emphasize her point and it just makes it so meandering and long and boring and I just get completely bored by the end of the sentence. It just really did not work for me and I honestly think it's just also really outdated for its time. This was published in 2004. Um, I was literally like 11 years old when this was published. It's very outdated and the problem is it's definitely bringing up some things that are still happening today and it's asking you to be hopeful when they're still kind of like happening again. I think that's also part of the problem but it's also because they're talking about things that happened like almost 20 years ago and they're just kind of really not relevant anymore and I really feel like they need to update this and to have someone rework it for sure. So I didn't get this at 50% and it's definitely gonna get a one star out of me. But I think it has a great premise. If you can get through it, I would highly recommend it. I couldn't get the audiobook, and I think I definitely would have enjoyed the audiobook more about reading it in person was kind of excruciating. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I at least had one five star and I guess a one star. But you know what? At least I read two books and that's what counts. If you have any nonfiction suggestions, please drop them down below. I'm always looking for new nonfiction suggestions. And I will see you guys again soon. Like, subscribe, talk to you guys next time. Bye.